Welcome! In this short video, we're going to go through one application of the time value of money, the internal rate of return, or IRR for short. Let's refresh what our definition is of the internal rate of return. So the internal rate of return is an interest rate, it's measured by a percent, but it's a special interest rate. It's the interest rate where the present value of cash flows is equal to the upfront cost of a project. So a project can have an upfront cost or a series of costs, but also a series of positive cash flows. The internal rate of return is going to make those things the same when properly discounted. The internal rate of return has a lot of real life applications. It's used to evaluate investments, for example, the investment in college, paying tuition upfront in the hope of future earnings. That's an IRR calculation. And when we actually calculate the IRR, we then have a comparable number to compare to other projects or to compare to the cost of financing a project, known as the cost of capital. So IRR is going to have many uses. Let's start with an example, a very simple example. So in this example, suppose we have a computer course that you're considering taking on the job. It'll make you more productive, but the course is costly. It has an $1,800 upfront cost. However, your employer would like to encourage you to gather the skill, so they offer a bonus over the next five years of $500 a year if you take this course. So in an IRR application, we'd like to know the interest rate, or in other words, the discount rate, where the present value of those bonuses will be equal to $1,800. Because the $1,800 cost is up front at time zero, but you have to wait over five years to get $500 a year for the bonus. So we really need to think about present value if we're going to compare these cash flows. So what are we exactly solving for? Well, the equation we're actually solving for looks a little bit complicated, but let's go through it step by step. So we have an upfront cost of $1,800. We want to know the discount rate that will make it equal to the discounted cash flows that were promised by the employer. So the employer is promising what? $500 at the end of the first year, and we discount it. Another $500 at the end of the second year, and we discount it. Then the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year. The internal rate of return is the I that solves this problem. So how do we solve for it? Well, in the good old days of my college days, it was trial and error, and um, it was not a lot of fun. But fortunately, we have a spreadsheet that can do this very quickly and very easily. So I'm going to skip over to um, an Excel and a spreadsheet to, to solve this problem. All right, so here we are. Here I am in the spreadsheet, and I'm going to use um, a formula, a financial formula, known as rate. Because all of the payments are the same at $500, I can use this formula known as rate. So I'm solving for the rate. The formula is called rate. So we uh, look at our worksheet here and fill in what we uh, know and solve for what we don't. So this is over a five year period the payments are received. The payments are identical, which is why I can use this rate function, and they're identical at $500 each. The present value, the upfront cost is $1,800. That's a cost. So we're going to put it in as a negative. And then finally, at the very end, there's no lump sum at the very end. It's just the series of $500 payments. So our future value is zero. And sure enough, it calculates it for us very quickly. So at approximately 12.05%, the present value of the $500 payments is equal to $1,800. So let's swing back to our example. So at about 12.05%. Now, if we were evaluating this in real life, that's, that's a very good rate of return. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would probably be a very good deal. Now let's think about, let's change the example a little bit. Suppose instead that the bonuses were structured a little different. They start higher and they end up lower. So if you'll notice in nominal terms, if we don't count the time value of money, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300, it still adds up to $2,500. However, the cash flows are different, so we shouldn't expect the IRR to be the same because each cash flow is discounted a little bit differently because it's received at a different time. In fact, here's the problem we're solving. So note now that the payments here are a little different. The cost is the same. And we now we want to solve for the I 
that makes these two sides of the equation equal. It's not going to be 12.05%. So I'm going to swing over to the spreadsheet here in a minute, but think intuitively. Do you think the internal rate of return is going to be higher here or lower here because we've changed around the cash flows? Okay, let's hop over to our spreadsheet. Okay, now, in this case the payments are different, so I'm going to use a function called IRR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to input the cash flows here in this column. So we'll have minus 1800, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300. And let me change the number format here. Let me format the columns, and these are actually numbers. There we are. Okay, so now I have the data entered in terms of the cash flows, and now I'm going to use a formula called IRR. It's right there. So, the IRR, so it tells me what are the values, and there they are. What's a guess? The guess is optional, um, and it actually uh, isn't really necessary here because this is a simple problem. So I'm just going to hit OK. So what did we find out? 14.16%. So in other words, the IRR is higher. Well, let's think about why that's true. Well, here you look here, you see more cash flows sooner, the lower cash flows are later. So in fact, we're actually getting more of our money sooner, which we know we like. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. So it's not surprising that the IRR at about 14.15% is in fact going to be higher under this scenario. All right. Again, let's think intuitively then, having just done that problem, if we actually here have a bonus system where it's raising from 300 all the way up to 700, in fact you would expect an IRR that's going to be smaller here because again, the smaller cash flows are up front. So let's actually uh, look at this in Excel. See, we can actually change these now and make them ascending. And look, using the IRR function, in fact, I'm right. It's 10.44% when uh, the cash flows are ascending instead of descending. So the timing of cash flows matters and the size of cash flows matters when we're calculating the internal rate of return. Let's skip um, again to a different example. So again, this is an IRR example. And this is the choice between an annuity and a lump sum. In other words, a series of cash flows annually versus a lump sum today. And one of the best examples are the various lotteries we see. So the Powerball jackpot, once upon a time, back in August of 2012, that I should have won, but I didn't, is um, advertised at $340 million. Now I think everyone here knows, whether you buy a lottery ticket or not, that you don't get $340 million. In fact, what you would get is either $17 million a year for 20 years, in other words, a nominal value of $340 million, but you have to get it over 20 years. Or if you take the lump sum, and that particular date, the lump sum was offered as $241 million up front. So you can take the payments, or you can take the lump sum. So you might think about which one would you choose. It's a nice choice to have, right? But which one would you choose? And given that choice, what does it imply about our discount rate? So the first thing we'd like to do is like to figure out, well, what discount rate would make $17 million a year for 20 years equal to a present value of $241 million? So let's start and solve that first. And again, Excel can make this very easy for us. All right. So I actually, there I gave away the answer. But here we are. So $241 million up front equal to payments, 20 payments of $17 million. Right, so I have this dot dot here because I didn't write all 20 terms. I'd like to solve for that. And when I do solve for that, I get 3.53% here. So let's, um, let's pop out to Excel and I can show you exactly how I got that. Okay, We'll go over to this column here. Again, the payments are identical. 
right? The payments are 17 million, so I can use, once again, the rate function, which is a little bit easier to use, to calculate this. So number of periods, 20 years. Payments, 17 million. The present value, 241 million. And again, that comes in as a negative. And sure enough, the rate calculation gives me a little over 3.5%. So 3.5% or a little, a little higher makes me pretty much indifferent um, if I only cared about the time value of money. But I'm guessing in this scenario some of you would have a strong preference of whether you take the payments or whether you would want the lump sum of $241 million. Well, what does it mean? So at 3.53%, you're indifferent between $17 million per year for 20 years or $240 million today. So if your discount is 3.53%, you shouldn't care about which one of those choices. You shouldn't have a strong preference. Well, I'm guessing a lot of you do care. So suppose you would choose number one. What does that tell you? Well, if 3.53% makes you indifferent, but you're actually willing to wait, that suggests you have a discount rate that's lower. A lower discount rate means that you're more patient and you're willing to wait for your money. Conversely, if you say, I want the $241 million today, you're relatively impatient. So that says that you don't really want to wait for your cash flows, and so you have a higher discount rate relative to what makes you indifferent. So the IRR gives us a basis of comparison and really tells us in terms of the choices people make what their discount rate is in terms of higher or lower than the point of indifference.